Thunderdome Boxing Talk, Anthony here. All right, uh, Carl Frampton defeats Scott Quigg. Split decision, um, which I thought was bullshit. I'll, I'll be honest. I thought that was bullshit. Uh, I, you know, I'll get to it anyway. I, I don't see how the fucking guy could have it. Se I don't see what seven rounds in the world, you, you know, uh, no way, no way. You know, I don't want to hear it, man. That dude was dozing off or he already had his scorecard filled out before the fight. I thought it was pretty clear. The You know, the rounds Frampton won, it was clear he won those rounds. And the rounds that Quig won, it was clear he won those rounds. Um, I had it 8-4, just like two of, the, you know, the other two judges, the ones who were watching the same fight as everyone else. Um, one swing round, maybe, you know, one swing round uh, at most, you know, um... And that's that, you know. I did think there was one swing round, um, you know, but I, I couldn't even give it seven five. I could have actually went nine three, to be honest. Um, and that would have been um, what you know, rounds eight, nine, ten, and eleven. I could have honestly seen myself even given Frampton round eight, which I didn't, but. I could have seen myself. Um, a couple of shots, you know, 10, you know, it, it all depends, you know, um, how effective were they? You know, let's be truthful. Who looked better in the 12th round? You know, when the time came, who had more in the tank? So were those punches really effective or was, you know, uh, Frampton just making sure that he didn't gas out, using his experience, making sure when the 12th came, letting Selby, you know, because at the end of the fight, Selby's just letting it all hang out. I'm Selby. Why I keep saying that? Um, I was thinking about Leo Santa Cruz, what he said after the fight. But anyway, um, Quig letting it all hang out at the end of the fight. He's, you know, empty in his tank. So when that 12th round came, he might not have looked as gassed um, as you thought Frampton would, but he was, maybe even more. And that's why he couldn't do anything in the 12th round. And, you know, uh, was getting smacked with some really big shots. And uh, Frampton was neutralizing everything he did. But let's start off from the, you know, I picked Frampton to win this fight on the cards. Um, and I was hoping for no hokey shit, you know. I, I, I'm sorry, I don't see how anyone could have quick winning that fight. Um... With the, especially with the experience of Levi Martinez in the first place. But, you know, uh, when I was, did my pre-fight vid, which I, I just watched um, before this, basically, all the things that I thought would lead uh, Frampton to victory are what led him to victory. Now, I thought the fight would be played out a bit different. Um, however... You know, I thought there would that Quig would actually engage in spurts, you know, a little more often. You know, that Frampton would kind of be boxing on boxing them, and, you know, Quig would also be boxing, which he wasn't. He just stayed in a fucking shell for six, seven rounds. I mean, you know, and then uh, his fucking coach, what the fuck is his problem? I mean, telling him, yeah, yeah, you're, you're, you know, it's even, and, and shit was not even at, like, round six or something, um, when they said that. No, you had just lost almost every fucking round, if not every round. So, I don't understand that. I mean, that, that dude, uh, Gallagher, no, no, not at all, man. Now... Uh, in the first round, what did he throw? One punch? Two punches? Quig? And he's the one that was yapping all this shit, right? Um, the main, the main guy talking all that, I'm gonna knock you out shit, promising the KO and all of that. Then don't even let his hands go. Uh, you know, just basically shelled up. I, he was nervous, and I told you in that, like, the, the pre-fight vid, you know, that this was a bigger step up for Quig. 
than it was for Frampton, even though it was a step up for both guys. So both were nervous at the beginning, but Quig was a lot more nervous, and his team brought him in in a fucking stupid-ass game plan. You don't just give away early rounds. Like, here, just take these fucking rounds. You don't do that. Um, that's like as dumb as fucking when Tim Lane you know, told Algieri, let's just give away the first five. We'll come on on the end and knock him out. Like, that's basically what they were planning the same thing. That's one of the dumbest game plans in boxing history. You know, and then people, I asked about his draws, and they were telling me, you know, the Salidas one, which was talking about a lot tonight. I watched it last night um, after someone mentioned it in my comments. Uh... You know, they told me he really didn't do much at the beginning, started slow, came on strong at the end, uh, could have went either way, felt the draw was just. Um, I do too. I felt the, the draw actually was, you know, a draw, or possibly could have even given it to Quig. Um, but a draw was fine. For that very reason, you can't just come in and give rounds away. I don't know who thinks like that in boxing, man. Because now you have, all right, you just left no doubt for these four rounds, say. Now you got eight rounds left. You got to win seven of them on three of the, you know, all three cards. You got to win seven. Well, two out of three, I mean. You got to win seven rounds, you know, um, matching rounds. You can't just win, like, seven random ones. You know, you got to get, get three of them judges. They, they got to have you winning some rounds, uh, and we all know the judges can judge, you know, so differently that who's to say, you know, when you do start fighting that they still think the other guy's winning, you know, because you just put into their mind, like, judges will sometimes score in rhythm, you know, they'll start seeing a guy banking rounds, and even if, you know, hey, now you, you are starting to let your hands go, but so is he, and it's about even, it's close, it maybe could go either way, but probably should go to you, they, they'll sometimes still just be like, no, he took it, he's he's better, he's been proven, he's, he's better. And it'll take them a couple rounds to actually catch on and be like, oh, no, wait, this guy is winning those rounds. So instead of getting, you know, five rounds that you should have gotten, you got, you know, three or four. Um, so you never want to take that risk. I can understand coming out, you know, filling them with that jab and being patient around. But after that, and you got to do something. And Frampton came out loose. You know, um, he I, I said he was always in great shape. He's always in great shape. Um, he was in good shape for this fight. Um, I started to worry that maybe he wasn't. But then the way he finished in the 12th, yeah, he, you know, he had it. Um, it all came down to, you know, the fundamentals, the, the head movement, the upper body movement, the multiple looks that he was able to give Quig and, you know, disrupt Quig. I mean, you know, Quig was fighting just one way, hands up high, tucking them deep and stalking. Uh, but, you know, like I said in the pre-fight video, it's hard for some of these guys to time, um, Frampton because he's giving you so many different looks. He's bending down low. He's popping his head over here, over here. He stands up. He's working the jab. You know, he's sidestepping over and sidestepping back over this way. He's coming forward. He's going backwards. I mean, you know, he can fight so many different ways. It's hard to really get it down. Now, Quig is fighting one way and one way only. Frampton could get that down. You know, he was able to basically anticipate when Quig might do something and hurry up and hit him first. Put him back in the shell, which was what I was saying Quig needed to do to Frampton. You know, keep Frampton from throwing as often as possible. You know, you want to limit his output. He did the complete opposite. The complete fucking opposite. Just let, let Frampton throw all round long. You know, and maybe I'll see an opening I like and go for a big bomb and miss... Three out of four of them, you know. No, that you're not gonna win a fight that way. I'm sorry, um, not going to happen. 
And at the end, he, they asked him, you know, do you think it, maybe you should have started a little faster? And he said no. You know, the I heard the la one of the last things he said was, and I think he only said it because like 20 different people had said this to him already. Hey, you think you should start it faster? You think you should have started faster? And he kept saying no, no. And then finally he was like, oh, I'd like a rematch. You know, maybe I would start faster. He's, you know... <sighs> You only said that because you just heard, you know, you should have did that 50 times and you're trying to sell the rematch. Would you? Probably not. You know, it, and we hear he's, you know, and from what we, it's not even what we hear, it's from what we, you know, can tell and see is that this guy is in the gym constantly. So why should he be even questioning um, his own stamina? You know, he said, well, I didn't want to, you know, come out hard at, at first and then, you know, run out of steam. No one said you had to come out going 100 miles an hour from the gate, but from you saying I train like a fucking demon, you should actually be able to do that, you know, come on. But, okay, you train like a, a hard, you train very hard. You should at least be able to go at, you know, 80%, 75% for the first half of the fight. <laughs> You know, then, you know, judge yourself and pace yourself to, you know, go full speed here, step back, lay off the gas, catch your breath, keep going, you know. You know when, you're, when your body is running on E. Um, he waited way too long. Could he have done anything earlier? I don't think he could have. Uh, anyway, honestly, I don't. Um, Franton was too sharp at the beginning. He needed Frampton to, you know, because he wasn't doing shit. So he was still like 100% when that 6th, 7th round started because he didn't do anything. You know, it's not like he took a ton of punishment to where now he's no longer 100%. No, it's like damn near the first bell just rang. But Frampton had just thrown a whole bunch of punches. So he's, you know, now he's running on like a... 60% of gas, and you still got like 90%. Okay, yeah, that's what it took for you to, to go neck and neck and barely nicking rounds? No, that's why you could he couldn't do it at the beginning because of the head movement, the, the fundamentals, the upper body movement, the footwork, the anticipation, the experience. The, you know, I couldn't believe how easily he was just letting... Uh, Frampton, just walk inside. Just walk inside. You know, I kept saying he should be popping that jab, you know, um, at different speeds, stepping back, stepping back, you know, keeping Frampton trying to, to get in and try to agitate him, make a mistake, and rack him. You know, every time you try to come in, wing a good shot or two. Not, nothing. Nothing. You know. So then he's left with his corner telling him, oh, you're losing the fight. <laughs> you know, the fight's done if you don't basically get some knockdowns or stop him. We ain't winning this fight. Why didn't they tell you that way earlier? Because he could have told him that three rounds earlier. Um, you know, if, if you continue to fight this way, we are 100% losing this fight. Um, you know, you're the guy that just told him he was doing good and it was even. Now it's like... You're losing this fight. You're you have you have no chance of winning this unless you go out there and give it give it everything. I don't think that Gallagher is a good uh, good coach at all. I don't. Um, I don't. I heard he you know, uh, yeah he he can have some good wins. I'm not I'm not seeing the talent in him uh, at all. You know, I'm not his advice in the corner, his game plan, everything was just atrocious. Um, Quig can't blame it just on him though; he has to blame it on himself. Uh, yes, you're supposed to listen to your team because that is who is going to get you through a big fight like that. But you know, you're a fighter; you're not put in that ring to just stand there. You're in there to fight. You know. <laughs> Yes, Frampton might have been barely taking them rounds because, you know, hey, if you're not going to do anything, uh, you know, I'm, and I didn't like that Frampton was doing this because normally he was, I talked about how good of a combination puncher he is, and they were talking about that too, you know, 
where were the combos? Instead, he was just one shot, bang, rip to the body, you know, one, two, big two, you know, a left hook, rip to the body, and then he just peck away, peck away, stay busy. But I was on the same belief as uh, Frochat. I don't know if everybody got to listen to the same broadcasters. What the uh, what we heard in America, those dudes were dick riding Quig so hard. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, maybe they're you know friends with him or whatever. I don't know. But and them first rounds when Quig was doing absolutely nothing, they would they would just talk about him. You know, the replays were him, you know, landing his one shot. Uh, I, I I couldn't get it. You know, I was like, hey, uh, Frampton just won fucking multiple rounds in a row. Why are you shitting on Frampton and giving Quig props? Uh, I, I didn't like that at all. It seemed like very biased commentary in America. I don't know what you guys in the UK had. Um, but Carl Frotch came on. And said, you know, how I score fights is, you know, basically, and I agreed with what he said. He basically said, um, I'm going to paraphrase, but, you know, if one guy isn't trying to fight and one guy is at least trying to make it a fight, he's going to get the round. And that's, that's the only thing you can do. If one guy is not doing shit and the other guy, you know, m or might only be doing that much more but he's at least letting his hands go, toying with you, standing right in your firing zone, you know, putting his hands up, leaving his chin wide open, and, you know, fucking with you, trying to get you to open up so he can get to work, you know, because when you're just a shell, what the fuck is he supposed to do? You know, bang on a shell and punch himself out? No, he's not going to do that. He's going to do just enough to take the rounds, and that's the smart thing to do. As boring as it was, it was the smart thing to do for Frampton to got him the win. Um, who knows, if he would have went all out, what if he didn't stop him? Then the second half of the fight, Quig comes on, and he is gassed then, and gets fucking knocked out. Or gets dropped a couple times and loses on the cards. No, he did exactly what he was supposed to do. You know, he did. Um... He's not a big, big puncher. I mean, Quig is the bigger puncher, and even he's not a big, big puncher. So, you know, no one was in there looking for that one-punch shot. Uh, honestly, you know, I don't know. It, it, it was The first half of the fight was trash. Um, the second, I mean, it was still interesting. I was still very into it because I knew at any moment a fight could break out, a big shot could land, um, so I was still very into it. However, you know, I was very disappointed in Quig, especially with all the shit that he talked, like on the face-off with uh, uh, Nelson and everything. You know, it was like, I expected, you know, for him to, to come out and do his thing. And you think they would have learned from the Salidas fight, right? You learned on that fight that that's, you don't do that, you know? You're lucky you got a, a draw in that fight. It could have went the other way, too. You know, yeah, it could have went to a W, too, but you also could have got an L. Um, and that ain't how you fight the biggest fight of your life. Yeah, I couldn't, I, I don't know, man. Steve Farhood said it the best at the end. He said either uh, Quig came in and froze for seven rounds, or that was the stupidest game plan in the history of boxing. I think it was a bit of both, but mo mostly the game plan. Um, you know, mostly the game plan. Because whenever he was told to start letting his hands go, he did. Um, so, you know, I, I could blame him mostly on the game plan. But Quig should have known that he wasn't winning those rounds. You know, and that after four or five rounds go by, like, not even four or five, three, three rounds go by, uh, okay, it's time to get busy now, right? And he should have been at least you know, trying to keep those rounds even. That way, you know, they could flip-flop on some of the judges' cards. He he gave himself no chance. That's That was my whole problem. Um, now, the winner, <coughs> Carl Frampton, is now the unified um, I, IBF champion and uh, WBA, uh, Super Bantamweight, unified champion. And I know Rigo is one of his mandatories. They didn't ask him about Rigo at all. 
which I was pissed about because I wanted to hear what he was going to say about Rigo in the press conference, post-fight presser. I'm sure someone's going to ask about that. Um, but we know the answer. It's going to be he's taking a rest. He just had a long camp. Well, then we'll think about opponents later. And he said, if a big fight like Leo Santa Cruz it comes calling, I'll take it. Well, Leo Santa Cruz already said, you know, it, it, right after the fight, it went to Leo Santa Cruz um, versus Kiko for tonight, which I think is a fucking retarded-ass fight. Um, it shouldn't even be happening. I don't know how this guy is even, you know, getting a title shot. Voluntary, not, it's just, no, shouldn't have been allowed. All right, you want to take it? The fucking title can't be on the line. That's what they need to be doing to these guys. But they want their fucking sanctioning fees, so they'll, they'll let anything fly. Um, I mean, come on. You know, uh, but, um... You know, it's a fucking, like, 5'8", 69-inch reach, Leo Santa Cruz versus, like, little 5'5", 66-inch reach. Um, if that, if he even has 66-inch reach, I think that's what he has, but I'm not sure. Um, Kiko, old Kiko, super bantamweight Kiko, um, you know, could get been getting whooped and knocked out Kiko. Come on, man. And then... He doesn't even call out. He doesn't even say, I want to unify with my division. Right? No. Um, Frampton says, hey, Selby, Santa Cruz. Um, did he maybe say Gary Russell? I don't know. He said three names, I think. And I remember Selby and Santa Cruz were the names. Or two of them. And he said some, another name, I believe. Um, which I didn't like. Because I want to see Frampton and Rigo. You know, hey, and if you're going to run up out that division without fucking letting uh, Rigo get his belts back, like, fight fucking Rigo and let him try to get his belts back. Right? Come on. Come on. Um, his belt back. Get in there. Get in with this fucking guy, you know, and l let's see what happens. Um, hey, I think I know what happens, but I want to see it. You know, because I don't know for sure. That's the reason I want to see it. Um, if I was 100% sure that Rigo wins, I wouldn't need to see it. But I don't want Rigo to, you know... Frampton just had his big money fight, okay? And we know that the Rigo fight with either of those guys didn't happen because that fight was going to happen first because it generated so much money. And they didn't want to take an L before that. Okay, that fight's out the way now. What you do now is you fight the best in your division. Who is that? Rigandau. Rigandau. Rigo. Right? You fight him. If you lose, then you go up to 126. It's that simple. That simple. If you win, you still can go up to 126. But you got to fight the best guy in your division, man. You can't be hanging around this guy for fucking two years, you know, <laughs> almost three years talking about fights and it never happens and then you run out the division without even fighting them nah nah um plus you might be able to get that fight in somewhere like ireland you know maybe uh you can get a huge percentage of it because he would clearly be the the draw in the a side or even put it in the uk somewhere um you know rigo might be able to get a fair amount of money out of that you know, but he ain't getting no, you know, 60-40 split or, you know, 50-50 split or nothing like that. But he could get a nice chunk of change um, more than he's going to get fighting, you know, anyone else. So why wouldn't he take the fight over there, right? Um, if He should, anyway. He definitely should. You know, if they offered him, like, 700 grand, shit, if they offered him 500 grand, he should fucking be on that and taking that. Um... But I think he'll make that anyway from just just from Rock Nation and shit. Um, I don't know. I think he has to fight Rigandau. Then go up there. But I don't think it's going to happen. Because it seems like Heyman already has that plan. Like he got Frampton. He just made Frampton into a you know big name fighter. Just unified the titles, all that. And now he's going to have... He has a guaranteed win coming for Leo Santa Cruz tonight. And Santa Cruz... Isn't calling out Loma, isn't calling out Walters, isn't calling out um, Rigo, 
Did like did, did did people forget that this guy ducked the fuck out of Rigo and now he said I want the winner of Quig Frampton? How about same for this guy? If you want to fight a smaller man, how about you fight the best smaller man who is Regan now, who you ran from for your whole for fucking ever, who you were scared to death to fight and apparently still is. You know, I'm. I will. I would guarantee you, Rigo would go to 126 and fight him. No problem. I. I, I would guarantee it. Make the offer, and I bet you, Rigo takes it. You know. So he doesn't want to fight. You know, he doesn't want to unify with Loma. Uh, doesn't want to unify with Gary Russell Jr. In-house fight can be made like that. Uh, no, he wants to fight another smaller. Man, you know, uh, shit, who's even smaller than Kiko. Yes, he's in his prime and all that, but he's even smaller than Kiko. You know, same height, but uh, uh, an even a, a 60, 62-inch reach, right? 62-inch reach versus 69-inch reach. And Leo Santa Cruz ain't no Scott Quigg. All right, Santa Cruz would beat the brakes off of Scott Quigg. All right, so Santa Cruz would be the favorite in that fight. Uh, don't get it twisted. I don't like him, but he is the favorite in that fight. Um, you know, he fights a lot of bums and all that, but, you know, he's a decent fighter, and he's a solid fighter. Frampton ain't hurting him. He's going to walk Frampton down and just keep punching and punching and punching and punching, and he'll probably win a decision. You know, maybe even he'll, he'll probably win a decision. You know, but still, the point is he'll win... Where does that leave Frampton now? You know, where does that leave Frampton? To 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 go get fucked up by uh, Gary Russell Jr. next? You know, because that's what you know Al Heyman likes to do: have his all, all his fighters beat up on the same guy. You know what I mean? Fuck that. You know, I don't know what the fuck is Santa Cruz calling out the winner of. Uh, Frampton Quig for. You know, why? Why? You should be wanting to unify your own division. Just like, you know, Frampton should be wanting to unify his own division and certify, you know, that he is the best of his division before moving up. Um, you know, it's like, uh, I, I would love to see Crawford move up, right? But I don't want him to. I, at all, I'll be pissed if he does. And he's one of my favorite fighters. Like, one of my favorite, favorite fighters. I can't fucking wait to see him fighting. You know, well, there's going to be an undercard first, but I can't wait. Um, he has to prove he is the best at 140. Yes, we all suspect it. Just like we all suspect Rigo is the best. And we, we, we know that Rigo and Frampton are the best at 122 right now. They have to fight. They have to fight, and we need to see, you know, uh, Crawford and Postal. Have to see it. We have to see Crawford and Broner. Have to see it. You know, now if Broner needs Broner just won't fight him. Okay, I get it. But you at least try to make the fight. You know, we got to see him against these guys. You know, a Provodnikov. Put him in there with a Provo. Let's see what he can do. Um, you know. He got to fight these guys. I don't want him to dip up out of that division without creating legacy in it. He created legacy at 35. All right? Became the lineal champ. You know, damn near cleared the division out. Um, damn near. Um, but he was the man, and he, he couldn't make the weight no more anyway. So he came up here. He can make this weight. He can create legacy here, and it's a good division for legacy. A um, lot of good fighters there. A lot of good fights. You know, this Hank Lundy, um, good stay-busy guy, but it has to be the last of these stay-busy type names. I don't want to see another fucking Beltron. I don't want to see another fucking Delore, man. I don't want to see another Lundy type name. It's over. Fight the guys like Herrera. Uh, you know, shit. Um, even a, a Benavidez. Anyone, man. Just somebody. You know, start fighting, you know, upper echelon guys from your division. Mostly world, you know, post all and Broner and shit like that. Try to unify. And uh, Troyanovsky, the Russian guy. 
um, then boom, you're undisputed. I mean, that's what he should be gunning for. Uh, that's why, but I feel that way about every fighter. You shouldn't be fucking worrying about bouncing around weight divisions and snatching up easy fights and, you know, ooh, 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 unless it's like a, a, a Manny Pacquiao fight at 47. Okay, I get it. You know, you got to go get that kind of money and that kind of fame. You jump at that fight, but you get your ass right back down to 140 and get back on your game, you know, uh, create legacy. See, and I don't want... Frampton, see, Crawford could go up and possibly beat Pacquiao, right? Might lose, too, but the thing is, you know, he has a chance. I don't see Frampton having a chance against Santa Cruz. I don't. So it's like, why even go up there? All you're doing is they're going to blow your head up and put you in the ring and get you beat for no reason. When you can create legacy at 22. And he said, I can make this way easy. Trust me, I can. This was easy. Them rumors, they were all that rumors. So if you can keep making this way easy, then fight Rigandau. That's the fight everyone wants. Alright? Like, there's one fight at 122 that the world wants. You know, Carl Frampton versus Guillermo Rigandau. That's it. You can't leave the division and not give it to us. You know, I can understand if you try to make it and Rigo is being, um, pricing himself out type shit, you know. Uh, then, okay. But hey, you gotta try. And you gotta try hard. Because you should want to prove you are the best in your division. You know. If you gotta make some concessions, uh, you know, let up on the diva demands a bit, do it. Just make the fight. And let's see what happens. Because then if you lose, uh, you know, you don't, I wouldn't say use it, but you, you know, your fans could always, as long as you went to 126 afterwards, his diehard fans and supporters would be like, he, oh, he only lost because he couldn't make 22 anymore. He killed himself to make the weight. You know, you know how it happens, man. They'll throw them rumors out before the fight just in case you lose. Um, then the next fight you move on. You know, and then it all looks like, oh, he only lost because he couldn't make the way, even though no motherfucker, you were a hundred percent and just got spanked. But that's boxing, right? They do that. I want to see unifications. I want you no know, clarity in these divisions. I'm tired of, you know, it's called undisputed for a reason. So there's not disputes on who the best is. Because right now I can sit here and be like. You know, clearly I got Rigo here. I do not think that. But I can I can sit here and say, Carl Frampton is without a doubt the best 122-pounder. And if you think he can't beat Rigo, you're, you're a fucking idiot. Or if you don't think he would whoop Rigo, you're, you don't know shit about boxing, right? Because you can create a dispute, right? Well, hey, this guy's, you know, he's a whoop-the-top guy at 22. He's a you know, unified champ. Rigo's over here not doing much at the moment. You know, hey, there's a dispute. But then I can come over here and be like, hey, Rigo will just mollywop your guy. You know, he'll mollywop him. He'll take him to fucking school. You know, he'll give him a lesson in his back in your in the UK, in Ireland. You know, and then we can go back and forth. No, 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 he won't. No, he won't. No, he won't. But once they fight, it's all over. There's no more disputing. Just like before this fight. It was Quig's gonna win. Frampton, no, no, Quig, Frampton, Quig, Frampton. Nope, no, Frampton. Now there's no more disputing that, okay? That, that's why we need clarity in these divisions, right? We need to find out who is who, who is the best. That's simple. And it don't take but a couple of fights in some divisions. You know, honestly. You know, like, what, what's it take at 22? One fight, you know? Um, you know, featherweight is a mess. Nobody but Lomo wants to fight anybody. Everyone's scared of fucking uh, each other except Loma. Um, you know, 130, that's, that, that might happen. Um, 160, looks like it's coming together. Yeah, I mean, come on, man. You know, just let's get some clarity in these divisions. Please, and Frampton, don't go for Santa Cruz just yet. Fight Rigandau, then go fight Santa Cruz. You know, Santa Cruz will be happy to get paid. 
another paycheck to fight another fucking easy ass fight. Don't worry about him. He'll be there no matter what because Heyman is not putting him in with anybody that has a chance of beating him. Um, well, other than the Mares fight, he needed that some big numbers, and that was a good fight. Um, I was I was glad that um, Santa Cruz took that fight. Yes, it was a past prime Mares, but everyone knew Mares. Um, if he did what he could, he could win the fight. You know, I was rooting for him to win. Um, so so pissed off at Leo Santa Cruz for being such a fucking duck and a bitch for so long. Um, but you know, hey, he pulled he pulled through, won the fight. Um, but that don't all of a sudden just give him, you know, now he can fight four, four more, you know, 80, 20 fights. No, no, you know, first fight at featherweight, Frampton's going to be fighting Leo Santa Cruz. Really? Come on. No, no, I'm not saying Leo Santa Cruz is some monster or something, but I'm just saying that's not a good fight for him first first fight up there. You know, not at all. Uh, or did he already have one fight at 126 already? But, eh, anyway. No, anyway. I don't want that fight. I want Rigo. You know, let we go, we go. Let Rigo win his titles off of a champion. Not go scooping up vacants and shit like that. You know, let him get a big fight. Now, if he's hard to deal with, then I understand. But at least try to make it. That's the way I see it anyway. Uh, let me let me know what you guys think, man. Thunder on Boxing Talk. Peace.